Uh, Jake, uh, six months since I've started as the uh, state CIO. And uh, what we have done is a few things. One, I have found that technology exists from 1974. Uh, 41 years of technical debt that we are carrying. Uh, four years we want to make as much uh, transformation as possible. So we have to make a journey of 45 years in the next four years. Uh, so we are bringing a lot of private sector management philosophies into how we are running technology. Uh, and in that, what we have done is we have divided every project into uh, milestones. And these milestones, generally from the private sector perspective, we think in terms of a quarter. Because we don't have a lot of time in Illinois to become competitive again, we have broken that down into 75 day chunks. So every project has milestones which are defined in 75 days and we try to accomplish and keep moving forward on that. And what we have done is divided every initiative into four buckets. So we have uh, transformation, governance, operational efficiency, and collaboration. Within transformation, two major projects that are going on. Uh, one is uh, the ERP system. So when we last spoke in April, uh, I mentioned to you that the uh, previous administration had done some good investment around procurement uh, for the ERP system. Uh, I investigated further, found that uh, we have made some right choices. So we went ahead and uh, did the contracts. Uh, and in July, we kicked off a statewide unified ERP system uh, with SAP as the software. Uh, and we are already on our way. Uh, at this time next year, uh, the state will have uh, four pilot agencies going live on unified financial system. At this moment, we have about 420 different systems that manage our finances, HR, grants, cash management, etc. So we are moving towards that. Uh, and in the next four to five years, the entire state, including a couple of other constitutional offices beyond the governor's office, uh, will be on a unified uh, singular ERP system. That's the one big project, uh, very critical over the next few months. The second one is we have um, 80 plus uh, agencies, boards, authorities, commission under uh, the executive branch. And what happens is each of them have some kind of technology, leadership, investment, resources, contracts, and everything in place. So by the time a dollar gets spent and we see the outcome, it gets divided into 80 plus times. So we are also, we have started uh, a, an overall organizational transformation effort uh, for the state of Illinois because IT to me is way beyond shared services now. IT is the business and innovation enabler. And we are going to basically bring all of these uh, technology resources together and then um, uh, again create uh, career opportunities for the existing IT professionals and then uh, partner with the businesses to make them uh, uh, part of our, our overall IT transformation journey with business and innovation enablement. So those are the two major projects we have going on in transformation and many other going on in, in other areas. Illinois already has an uh, open data portal, uh, which has been in place for quite some time, has not really been given a lot of uh, thought and nurturing that it has re had required. Uh, so we recently renewed the contract uh, and we brought that out of one of the agencies that was running that uh, back to the uh, central IT agency that's going to run this. So now we are going to start pushing a lot more on uh, having more open data sets, uh, data available for the, uh, 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 the mashup developers to kind of start making sense uh, out of it. So we are starting to do that. Uh, at the same time, if you, now I want to define open government slightly different. And to me, open is not just government giving out stuff. It's also the private sector coming in and giving out ideas to the government. So we have in, in, in um, uh, our public-private collaboration, what we have started doing is started working very closely with the local area corporations uh, like Orbitz, who just got acquired by Expedia. The reason why Orbitz got acquired by Expedia was not because it's a great travel company, it is, but it's a great mobile uh, development uh, workforce. And that was one of the major reasons why Expedia uh, acquired Orbitz. So I have the Orbitz CEO and their CTO come speak to my team and I had my team go and work with the Orbitz developers to understand how does a development environment work. So we are actually cross-pollinating a lot and opening up the government to get the private sector ideas and, and crisscrossing that between the two sectors. That's a great question. We sit on uh, uh, petabytes and petabytes of data. Uh, but haven't been able to use that much more wisely to answer uh, questions. 
So uh, we are setting up a data analytics practice. In fact, again, going back to my uh, learning for the private sector, I recently had a long session with State Farm. Uh, State Farm has uh, one of the premier insurance companies, and State Farm has a data science practice uh, which was set up about two and a half to three years ago and by now they have about 50 data scientists working at State Farm and so we basically uh, looked through the entire how did they set it up, what tools they're using, who are the different players, stakeholders coming together to build that and then we did the same thing by visiting Indiana and this, I mean, Indiana is actually one of the leaders in the data science practice. So um, over the next six months uh, we will have our own data science practice ready and in fact I want to uh, use the state school platform to reach out to the private sector individuals who are uh, who, who want to come and, and give back to the public sector. If you are a great data scientist and if you know how to set up a data science practice, please reach out to us. We are looking for great data scientists. I mean, cybersecurity has to be a forethought of everything that uh, happens because uh, one of the uh, federal leaders in cybersecurity actually put cybersecurity threat much higher than the terrorism threat itself. Because in, in cybersecurity, sometimes you don't even know that you are hacked for many days, sometimes many months. So you need to be very, very uh, completely on top of your game. Although what I think, uh, I think is cybersecurity is, is not a destination. Cybersecurity is all about process, controls, and awareness. We recently hired a chief information security officer and uh, he has 35 years of public safety background. Uh, he has worked uh, for the uh, Illinois State Police, he has worked for the Illinois Emergency Management Agency, he has been uh, a police officer himself, uh, and he also is an expert in security. So we got a CISO on play in place, and we have a governing council, uh, which is made up of uh, myself, our public safety director, the director of the Illinois Emergency Management Agency, and we also have involved National Guards, uh, and as part of this. So we are actually looking at this as a comprehensive uh, effort. And uh, again, I'd say in this also, we are reaching out to the likes of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange who need to be very much on top of their game as it comes to cybersecurity. And we are learning from them and applying it to, uh, to uh, the state of Illinois. So uh, in terms of keeping, uh, using technology to improve operations of government, uh, we are going to roll out our first online procurement portal, uh, e-procurement, uh, which is which will basically everything uh, pre-contract uh, will be done now online where you can get, we can put the bids online, we can get the solicitations or the responses to that on, online, and then we can also award the contract. Pretty much everything pre-contract is going to be available online by uh, this time next month. Uh, that's going to reduce uh, a lot of effort that goes on in procurement. And also, we'll, able, we'll be able to uh, pool a lot of procurement uh, together from various agencies and save uh, millions of dollars uh, by doing that. Uh, the ERP system itself, as it starts going out, uh, we are anticipating a tremendous savings coming out of that. I mean, we lose a lot of dollars, uh, federal grant dollars, just because we have so much um, stuff in different systems that we are not being able to pull stuff together in time to submit for a grant and get the money that we need to. And to us, again, ERP is going to save uh, tens of millions of dollars as soon as it goes in and hundreds of millions of dollars as it uh, completely rolls out a few years from now. So uh, technology is, is absolutely uh, helping us operationally becoming very efficient. But there is also uh, what I firmly believe is what you cannot measure, you cannot improve. So what we have started within the technology department itself is start measuring uh, how we are performing. So we have put in place, and this is very, this is quite normal in private sector, where you have KPIs, the key performance indicators defined uh, for every activity that you do. We have now defined KPIs for all of the services that we provide from the IT department. Every two months, I have a performance management session with my uh, direct reports. We also bring the governor's office. We also bring some relevant agency leaders in one room, and we walk through our performance over the last couple months, and then we, we talk, talk about what we're going to do in the next couple months, and, and basically how our performance was uh, against those KPIs that we have. So we are trying to now improve, measure first, and then improve uh, as, as the next one. So we are bringing those principles in place to become operationally uh, efficient and excellent. 
I think the big thing I've uh, uh, seen is now you have people like Governor Rauner uh, coming uh, from the pub, uh, private sector into the public sector as leaders to transform. Before we had a lot of people complain about the government and how inefficient they are. Now you have people, leaders like Governor Rauner coming in and trying to take the the uh, responsibility and say, you know what, I'm going to step in and change this, transform this. And he's also bringing a lot of other private sector leaders with him. So we are seeing that major fundamental shift that's happening uh, in a lot of governments, not just Illinois, but a lot of other places uh, it is happening. Uh, the other thing I have also seen is the employees in the, in the public sector, because they are now exposed to how the private sector works in their personal lives. Uh, they are not only expecting that the government also provides them that service, but because they are also responsible for uh, making the government efficient because they are themselves experiencing how easy it is to pay a bill online or through your mobile phone or check in uh, for, your, uh, for your flight and all those things that as employees, as individual, they experience, they want to start giving that experience out to the constituent, to the citizen. So we are seeing a lot more, um, I would say, eagerness uh, and co uh, for collaboration and eagerness to uh, build new stuff uh, in in government from the employees themselves. Uh, so that's that's one of the bigger things that we've seen. And the third thing that I've seen also is um, governments like Illinois are now ready to take uh, some minimal risks and be are, are ready to fail fast so that they can experiment and they can they can see what's working, what's not working, as opposed to waiting for a three year and a few million dollars spent and then finding out that this project is not actually working. So we are seeing that agile uh, kind of methodology also now uh, creeping into the government in a positive way.